All right, in, in past videos, we've looked at two models for solving fractions. One model that used money as a substitute for fractions. So, for example, instead of a fourth, we thought of 25 cents. Okay, and then we looked at another model that, model that looked at clocks and time. So instead of fractions like a fourth, we look at minutes. So a fourth of an hour would be 15 minutes. And this really enabled us to to use our intuition when solving different fraction problems. The thing is that, um, of course, these models are incomplete and can't help you with every problem. They can help you a little bit, but not completely. Uh, but moreover, there are certain fractions that work really well in the money system and others that work really well in the clocks. So in, in these two videos, we're going to look at two, or a couple different sets of strings uh, and think about which of these models will work. Uh, so for example, with the clock model, uh, fractions that work really great are fractions that are somehow connected to 60 because, of course, the clock is cut into 60ths, right? 60 minutes. So, for example, a half works great here. So does half an hour, a third of an hour. A fourth of an hour, I think is nice. A, a sixth um, works particularly well here because then we can think of 10-minute chunks. Uh, a twelfth is also really great that a twelfth represents five minute chunks and then one sixtieth which represents one minute now money um, the coins that work really well of course are one half one fourth right fifty cents twenty five cents one fifth which is twenty cents one tenth which is <coughs> excuse me a dime and one twentieth which is our nickel and what we should highlight i guess are um, which ones work particularly well in the clocks but not in the money and vice versa. So let's first look at the ones that work in both. So a half, we'll put a heart around it, why not? Works great in both money and the clock models. So does a fourth. So that's not going to be our deciding factor. Fourths and halves work really well in both. Um, but you might notice that a third works really well with the clock model, but is not the money. A sixth, twelfth, and sixtieth, all of these also work well with the clock model, but not so much the money model. And then for money, a fifth, a tenth, and a twentieth. Right? We can we can use the clock model for all of these, but they are just neater and work better with the money model. So let's look at some strings and then think about which model might actually work really well. So I'm going to open a new window. And I'm, you have to bear with me here. I'm going to actually write out the string as I talk through it. I guess you can fast forward through this, but um, I'm seeing them for the first time too, so I'm just going to write them out as I talk about them. So here we have a string with three fourths and four fifths, and then four thirds and five fourths, and then two and one half plus three and five sixths. 5 over 2 plus 23 over 6 and 28 over 7 plus 7 over 28 and look at that one for a moment and then I'm going to also simultaneously write the other string just so we can compare these two. 1 half and 1 third 1 third and 1 fourth 1 fourth and 1 fifth 1 fifth and one sixth, one sixth, and one tenth, and that's it. All right, so we have five expressions in each of these strings. Uh, what would you pick? What would you use? Well, I, you know, my approach, I think, in the book I'm reading here, which is a great book, um, it's called Many Lessons for Operations with Fractions, Decimals, and Percents. Um, great book. Uh, but I think they're looking for us, uh, one answer here to say, okay, in this string, I would use this model. In this string, I use another model, and I'm sure you could argue that. But I, I just prefer to take this one line at a time. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to pick one, uh, one model for all of them. I want to kind of feel that one expression at a time. This first one here, we have fourths, which are good in both models, and fifths. Uh, I'm going to use money here because uh, this is like 75 cents, and this is like 80 cents because each fifth is 20 cents. So 80 and 75 is 155 cents. Right, out of a hundred cents. So we can think of that as well basically a dollar and fifty-five cents, which is fifty-five over a hundred. We can reduce that, um, right, divide 
both numerator and denominator by 5, and I get 11 out of 20. So, uh, and that makes sense, right? That's 11 nickels, so $1, 11 nickels. So the money model worked well for that one. It's going to help me out this next one. 4 thirds plus 5 fourths. Actually, you know what? I, I don't like to use the money model for thirds, um, right? Because with thirds, it's splitting 100 pennies into three groups does not give you a whole number. And of course, there are ways around that. You can manipulate that. But it just fits nicely, I think, into the time model. So a third of, a third of an hour, what's that? That's 20 minutes. This is four thirds, so that's four groups of 20 minutes, which is 80 minutes. So 80 minutes plus five fourths. We don't want to switch back to the money model now that we're using the clock model. That would mean we'd be creating all different denominators and we'd, I think, be further from where we need to be. We could do that, but we'd have to keep track of different denominators and it might be a mess. So five fourths, uh, what's that? Well, a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. This is five groups of 15 minutes. So that's 75 minutes, right? Let me just double check. Five times 15, five times 10, 50, yep, 75 minutes. Ooh, that's kind of cool uh, because we almost have the same numerator. We have the same numerator up here, which is 155, except careful, we're not out of 100 now, but we're out of 60 because we're talking about, we're thinking about in terms of um, time, not money, right? Money with 100 pennies. 60 for minutes. So here, what do we really have? Um, we can think of this as two hours, right? Because 60 goes into 155 minutes twice. And what's left over? Well, 35 out of 60. And I'm running out of room I'll write up here. I'm going to divide both numerator and denominator, denominator by 5. And I get 7 out of 12. So 2 and 7 twelfths, right? That means 2 hours and 35 minutes. Next expression, here, um, sixth worked much nicer with the clock model, right? So, because we can split 60 into six groups and get 10 minutes, and that's nice. So we're, let's stick with hours and minutes. So here we have two and one half hours, plus three and five sixths of an hour, so three hours and 50 minutes. So that's five hours, right? Add the whole, the whole hours together plus a half an hour plus 50 minutes. And what's a half an hour and 50 minutes? Well, that's an hour and 20 minutes. So plus one hour and 20 minutes. How do we write 20, 20 minutes? Well, what is that? Um, let's think about that as two sixths, right? Because every sixth is 10 minutes. So two sixths or a third of an hour. Is, oh, I definitely did something wrong there. A third of an hour is 20 minutes. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah, third of an hour is 20 minutes. So. I added a half an hour plus 50 minutes, and that should give us, I'm sorry, an hour and 20. So this is an hour and 20 minutes, and that's correct. And that's six and one third. All I did there was add the five and the one to get six, and I reduced two over six to one third. So this is six hours and 20 minutes. Moving on, so so far I'm using the clock model twice and the money model once. Five over two plus 23 over six. Well. Um, halves, that's what this is, five halves, can work in either model, but again, the six work really nice with the clock model. Um, so this is tw 230 minutes, right? 230 minutes, because every one sixth is 10, this is 23 sixths, that's 236, plus five halves. Well, every, <coughs> excuse me, every half is 30 minutes, so we have five, that's 150 minutes. Okay, 150 minutes is out of 60. A lot of hours here. So what's 150 plus 230? I'm getting 380 over 60. And 60 goes into 380 six times. 60 times 6 is 360. And there's 20 left over, so one-third. Ooh, same thing as before. Very cool. Oh, yes, and I should have seen that. Uh, I don't know, I'm looking here, I see, well, 2 and 1 half, that's the same thing as 5 over 2. This is why I like strings, we see little patterns. 3 and 5, 6, that's the same thing as 23 over 6, because 6 times 3 is 18, plus 5 is 23. These are equal, these, these two expressions are exactly the same, so I'm glad we got the exact same answer. For once, I feel confident in my answer here. 
28 over 7 plus 7 over 28, and that, that looks nasty, right? But think outside the model sometimes, and I'm glad they threw this one in here, because the clock model and money model, as helpful as they are, if you just stick to blindly to a model and don't always think about what the, the problem is at hand, you can get stuck. If I just saw 28 over 7 and was not thinking about the clock model or the money model, I would just say that that's 4, right? Because 28 over 7 means what? It means 28 divided by 7. And that's 4, because 7 goes into 28 four times. And then what's 7 over 28? Well, it's the reciprocal of that. It's 1 fourth. Altogether, that's 4 and a fourth. So, so don't, I mean, we want to use models to have intuition, but don't lose other intuition you have. The clock model, money model, we can use them here. But why not just think about this as 28 over 7? Think about what we have. Here I lost track, I lost sight. I was so caught up in the models, um, I didn't even think to check, are these two expressions equal? And maybe we'll encounter something like that over here, maybe not. So half and a third. A third, again, clock model. I like that way. Half an hour plus a third of an hour, that's 50 minutes, or 5 out of 6. 50 out of 60, 5 sixth. A third popping up again, so that's like 20 minutes plus 15 minutes, right? That's 35 over 60, which we saw right here. So that's 7 out of 12. We reduced that before. A fourth and a fifth. We can use either one. Let's use the money model because we've been leaving it out so far, and I, I, I'm sad about that. One fourth is 25 cents. One fifth is 20 cents. So that's like 45 cents out of 100. Uh, we can divide numerator and denominator here by 5, and I get um, 9 out of 20. And we're done. Cool. Moving on. Here we have a fifth and a sixth. I'm going to use um, I'm going to use the clock model because of the sixth. A fifth of an hour, um, you, it might not pop out to you, but but you're looking for what goes into, into 60 uh, five times, and that's 12 minutes. So 12, because 12 times 5 is 60, and that's a fifth of an hour. So if we're using the clock model, we can think of a fifth as 12 minutes. And we can think of a sixth as 10 minutes, right, because it goes into 60 10 times. Um, a 10 goes into 60 six times. That's out of 60 minutes. So that's like 22 over 60. And we're going to reduce that, divide everything by 2, and we get 11 out of 30. And now, last but not least, we have a 6 and a 10th. I'm going to use, uh, I'm, I guess I'm overwhelmingly here using the, the clock model because with the 6th, whenever that pops up, I want to use a clock because I'm thinking of 60. And that means 10 minutes plus one-tenth of an hour, which is six minutes. Isn't that cool? One-sixth of an hour is ten minutes, one-tenth of an hour is six minutes. They line up. That's out of 60. So I get 16 out of 60, reducing, divided by eight. No, what am I saying? By two. I, I, I see two even numbers. I just quickly divide by two and get eight over 30. Divide again. Four over 15, and that's my last answer. And anyway, so when you see all these different problems, uh, incorporate the money and mo money model and the and the clock model into your intuition about fractions, but don't lose other intuitions that you might have. Just make them a part of your toolbox. And we've got one more string for you in the next video.